Hello, my name is Mathieu. I'm one of the co-founders of SIME and also one of the developers behind Avalanche. And today I'm going to show you how to transfer a catalog of images from one application to another while preserving a lot of the original edits and while also preserving a lot of the work that you've put into organizing your catalog in the first place. Are you ready? Let's go and dive right into Avalanche. For today's tutorial, I've chosen to migrate an Aperture library into Lightroom Classic. Avalanche supports many input and output formats, such as Luminar 4, Luminar AI, Adobe Lightroom, uh, and soon Capture One, with more formats coming later this year, such as Apple Photos. Avalanche is available from our website. A free trial lets you work with 100 images and 100 videos and check the results before you buy. Simply go to the Try page and check the versions that are available there. There are three versions depending on the output app. So there is a version for Adobe Lightroom, one for Skylum Luminar, and there is an unlimited version that lets you convert to any of the supported formats. Simply click on the download button and take a few moments to subscribe to our newsletters as we send uh, very useful information typically once a month. Once downloaded, simply launch the app and you're ready to go and do your first migration. Avalanche runs on Mac only. Sorry, Windows folks, we, we love you, but uh, porting to Windows is currently beyond our scope. Um, Avalanche requires macOS 10.14 to run, and we run happily on Big Sur, and of course, we'll take full advantage of Apple's M1 chips. Today, I'm running it on a Mac Mini uh, connected to two external drives. Let's review the interface quickly. We wanted to make it really simple for you to find where your catalogs are. This is why we created a browser screen where you can simply click on the available drives and Avalanche will find for you all the catalogs that could be translated and display them in this list. You can add further filters such as uh, filtering by catalog type or filtering by catalog status for example, to find all the already converted catalogs and, and open them. You can also use a search button to quickly find a specific catalog. Once you've selected your catalog, you can simply uh, click on the More Info on the Analyze button, and it will bring you to the conversion screen. You can also use drag and drop if you know exactly where your catalogs are, and simply drag them to the main user interface to open the conversion screen. This is the second screen of Avalanche. This is where it will display what it has found in the catalog and what are the, uh, his estimates for the conversion. So for example, this is a small catalog that contains 62 masters, 84 versions, a few faces and a few albums. It also shows me on a timeline where my photos were taken, when my photos were taken. So for example, here this catalog spans a few years between 2013 and 2019. Um, it also tells me what amount of space I need should I want to convert that catalog and copy all the masters to the uh, new location. It also gives a rough time estimate of the um, conversion time. If I'm happy to go ahead and want to convert that catalog, I simply click on the convert this catalog button. And here I'm presented with a few options that depend on the destination app for that catalog. Here, since I'm in Avalanche for Lightroom, I can choose to migrate to Lightroom and to the file system. And for each of those locations, I will have a few options that we're going to review together. Of course, the options that are available depend on the target app. So let's have a look at my options when I'm running Avalanche Unlimited. This is now the interface of Avalanche Unlimited. I've dropped a um, Lightroom Classic catalog containing over 80,000 images. And um, the options that are presented to me are slightly different now. My target destination can be Capture One, the file system, Luminar 4, or Luminar AI, um, since I'm coming from a Lightroom Classic catalog. And depending on the destination I choose, I will have different types of options available to me, depending on the capabilities of those destination applications. 
Let's now configure our options to go from Aperture to Lightroom Classic and see what these options allow us to do. So the, the first options we want to look at regard the way we treat master files and, and whether we choose to copy them or not. So this first option called Copy Reference Master File will decide whether we are going to create new copies of the masters that exist in my original catalog or whether we leave them where they are. Uh, please note that in the case of Aperture where some masters are managed, that means that they are stored inside the library itself, this master will always get copied. You also have some options to separate the image or video hierarchies means images and videos will be stored in different folders, or you can also choose to mix them, to merge them. Um, by default, we try to reproduce the source hierarchy um, of the albums, the projects, all the folders that are uh, in the left pane of, of um, the, um, uh, the project. But you can choose also to uh, another option, which will actually separate the collections and the projects. Whenever we copy the files, for example, the referenced files or the managed files, um, we will put them in a new folder hierarchy in the destination uh, location that you will specify later. You can choose how these images will be organized into that uh, new hierarchy, whether the, the hierarchy will be flat, that means all the images will be put in one single folder, or other uh, or whether you want to actually choose uh, a more structured hierarchy by project, by year, months, by year, months, day, etc. You have several options there to choose from. You can choose for which version of Lightroom you will export. We recommend, of course, to use the latest. And then the last option is very important, lets you uh, handle how previews will be um, copied. Previews are images that reflect exactly how your edited uh, version looks in the original catalog. So for example, in Aperture, uh, Aperture maintains full-size previews of all the images that it edits. If you choose to um, copy some of the previews, that means that in addition to the master that will get copied, you will also have a, an, a copy of the preview, in that case a JPEG, that perfectly reflects how the image looked like in um, in Aperture. So it's very interesting to use that uh, in situations where you think that the uh, you don't want to lose the original aspect, for example, when the edits that were performed were rather complicated. So Avalanche gives you a hint here, telling you that um, when the conversion is lossy or where the conversion is approximate, it gives you the option to copy the previews in those situations so that you will end up with a master that will be uh, migrated with, uh, with losses, but also with a, a JPEG preview that has no losses and, and really reflects how the image looked like. You can further choose if you want that operation to happen in every situation or only when a full-size preview is available. That lets you choose to only migrate previews when a real high-quality preview is available. You can also choose to append some uh, prefix to the images so you, you can easily identify them. Avalanche will put all the previews in separate uh, location and will also uh, identify them using albums that it will create in the destination catalog. Once our options have been chosen, we can click on the next button. And now the last thing we have to do is to choose a destination for our catalog, which I do now by um, choosing to export on the desktop. And then I can click on the convert button. Now Avalanche has read the um, input catalog and is now, has done the conversion, but is now finishing to copy all the files in the new destination, because this is the option I chose. Once completed, I will be greeted by a screen where the results of the conversion have, are displayed. Um, some information is given about, for example, the extra structure that has been created into the catalog. Uh, some errors might be shown here when errors occur. And now I can simply open the catalog and review the results. Before we review the results, let's have a look at how this catalog looked like in the first place in Aperture. As you know, Avalanche is using some clever machine learning tricks to um, guarantee that 
whatever effect you've created in the original catalog is also maintained in the migration. So let's have a look at what effects we had in this original catalog and how they were actually translated. This is our original catalog in Apple Aperture. As you can see, there are some images with several versions, like this one with the trees. Um, some versions are in black and white. Um, then there are some other images in which we have applied some severe adjustments, like here the temperature and tint has been really modified from the original, as you can see. Then there are some other versions in which we have applied uh, various treatments on color, lighting, etc. You can also see that those images have been annotated with either color, lab color labels or uh, ratings, and some of them also have uh, textual annotation. Now let's have a look and see how this catalog looks like in Lightroom. So from my results screen, I'm going to open the catalog directly by clicking on the button. There is no import that's necessary. Uh, Avalanche has created a catalog that's ready to be opened in Lightroom. As the thumbnails get computed now, you can see that a lot of the annotation have already been applied, like for example, the color ratings, the, um, the ratings themselves. And um, we can now have a look at those images. So these are images that have had different types of black and white mixing applied to them. And Avalanche has done the best it could to translate the original intention into the destination catalog. Um, if we look at those images here, where we had applied some um, fairly strong changes in the, in the white balance, well, Avalanche has computed the amount of uh, um, the, the new temperature for the white balance as well as the new tint that would reflect as much as possible the original intention. Same here, for example, for this image where we had applied uh, some coloring effects, uh, moving the saturation quite a bit in order to um, to get this uh, this result, and uh, if we look at the destination, of course some things are different, and we can't re effectively reproduce the original, but it's still quite a good. That's that was the, the original row after the modification in aperture, and and this is what we get in uh, in Lightroom. If you would use the Lightroom Classic importer for Aperture. First of all, it would take ages to convert uh, big libraries, but you will never get any of these effects. All the black and white images would be uh, colored image, and uh, uh, all the white balance, all the color effects, um, all the exposition adjustments that you have made in the source catalog would not have been converted into Lightroom. We hope you like this tutorial about Avalanche. We'll keep adding more videos about new capabilities, new features, and also about the do's and don'ts when it comes to migrating photo libraries. So please subscribe to our channel. You can also follow us on social medias where we talk about us and we also talk about future products. Avalanche has really been designed to take away the pain of migrating from one application to another. And we really hope that it helps you to stay on top of your photos and continue to be creative. Stay tuned and see you soon on this channel.